Hey y'all, welcome to 6th grade, chapter 9, lesson 2. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so in these ones, you're actually going to really like these ones we, once you get used to them. So all we're doing is wherever it says X, we're going to plug in the number it gives you. Okay? So let me zoom this in just a little bit more here so y'all can see. Okay. So this says that Y equals X minus 7. Well, this says that X is 10. So 10 minus 7 3. Done. Okay. 15 minus 7. 8. Done. 20 minus 7. 13. Done. Okay. This one's a little bit more tricky because you have to multiply it and then add. Okay. But it says for X, we're going to fill in whatever these numbers are. Okay, so for x, for the first one, I'm going to fill in 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 is 13. Then I'm going to fill in 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16. I'm going to fill in 5. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19. Okay? Not so bad, y'all. Okay? All right. Now, it's all about finding the pattern. Okay, so I know that you can't find 16 to a question mark and finding 32 to a question mark is difficult, but you do have two right here that are next to each other. So how do I get from 40 to 32? Well, I subtract 8. So then if I subtract 8 again, I'm going to get 24. If I subtract 8 again, I get 16. So that's the number that goes right there, okay? So now I have to look at the relationship between X and Y. Let me tell you what I mean, okay? It's going to be, our equation is going to be Y equals X, whatever X is, times, okay, how do I get from 2 to 16? Well, I multiply it by 8. Is 8 times 3, 24? Yes. Is 8 times 4, 32? Yes. And is 8 times 5, 40? Yes. So, okay. Although instead of doing x times 8, we can probably just do y equals 8x. Same thing, right? Okay. Okay. So, now let's try the next one, okay? We need to find out. First, the pattern for the bottom row. Well, 9, 10, blank, 12. Well, obviously, that's going to be 11. Okay? So now, I need to know how I get from X to Y. Okay? Well, I get from X, 18, to Y by dividing by 2. Okay? I get from 20 to 10 by dividing by 2. 22 to 11, divide by 2, and 24 to 12, divide by 2. So, we're going to say y equals x divided by 2. Done. Okay? All right. So, number 6, 13 to 15. Well, how do I get from 13 to 15? I add 2. So if I add 2 to 15, do I get 17? Yes. So then I'm going to add 2 again, and I'm going to get 19. Okay? Now, how do I get from X to Y? Okay? Well, I can't multiply 8 and get 13. I mean, I can, but it's going to be a decimal or a fraction. So if I add 5, I get from 8 to 13. So if I add 5 to 10, do I get 15? Yes. If I add 5 to 12, do I get 17? Yes. If I add 5 to 14, do I get 19? Yes. So I'm good. Okay. So we're going to say y equals x plus 5. All we did was add 5 to x to get y. Okay. So I want you guys to try number 7. You totally can. You guys are so, so smart. Okay. All right, tickets to a play cost $11 each. There's also a charge of $4 per order. Write an equation for the relationship that gives the total cost Y in dollars 
for an order of X tickets, okay? So we're gonna say Y equals, got that $11 per ticket, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Plus $4 per order, okay? I know y'all are used to seeing X as a multiplication sign, so it's a little rough, but you're in algebra now, guys, okay? All right, so we need to write an equation for the relationship shown in the table and then use the equation to find the estimated number for five. So I'm going to extend this, and I'm going to put a five right there, okay? Okay, so... To get from 1 to 24, I can add 23, or I can multiply by 24. So if I do 2 plus 23, I get 25. That's not 48. But if I multiply 2 by 24, I do get 48. If I multiply 3 by 24, I do get 72. If I multiply 4 by 24, I do get 96. So let's do 5 times 24. Okay, five times four is 20, here you are two. Five times two is 10, plus two more is 12. So 120, okay? So we're gonna say y equals 24x. It's 24 times whatever x is. Well, x was five, so we got it, guys. Okay, so equals 120 shrimp. It's talking about number of shrimp. Okay. All right. So let's do go on to the back where you guys are going to do the lesson check because you're brilliant geniuses. And we're going to go down and do the spiral review. Okay. So our spiral review starts with. Mindy wants to buy several books that each cost $10. She has a coupon for $6 off her total cost. Write an expression to represent her total cost for B books. Well, so we're going to have $10 per book, right? So 10B plus, or sorry, minus $6. And that's it, guys. So $10 per book. And then we're going to subtract that $6. Okay? All right. When a coupon of $1.25 is used, the cost of a taco meal is $4.85. The equation P minus 125 equals 485 can be used to find the regular price in dollars of the taco meal. How much does a regular taco meal cost? Okay, let me rewrite this here. Okay, so just like, remember that when we want the variable alone, we have to do the opposite of the sign. So over here, I'm going to add 1.25, which would cancel these two out. Okay, and whatever I do to this side of the equal sign, I have to do the other side. So adding 1.25, okay? So now, these cancel out, okay? And I add, well first I drop my decimal, okay? Five plus five is 10, carry the one. One plus eight is nine, plus two more is 11, carry the one. One plus four is five, plus one is six. So. Six dollars, because we're talking about money, and ten cents. Okay? All right. Which of the following are solutions for the inequality n equals negative, or sorry, n is bigger than negative seven? Okay? Well, it doesn't say n is equal to negative seven. It says n is bigger than. Okay? It says n, so if I used negative 6.9, I know that it's a smaller number. If we were talking about positive numbers, 
But when you're talking about negative numbers, it's closer to zero, which actually makes it bigger. So negative 6.9. Okay, and I don't know if any of the other ones are, so. Okay, so negative 7.2. Well, that makes it further away from zero. So that one's not going to be it. Negative six and a half, well, that's closer to zero. So it's going to be negative six and a half. So you should have those two written down. Okay? All right. Marcus sold brownies at a bake sale. He sold D dollars worth of brownies. He spent $5.50 on materials, so his total profit can be found by subtracting $5.50 from his earnings. Which equation represents this situation? All right. So his profit is however many dollars he sold worth of brownies minus the $5.50 he used to make the brownies. Okay. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out for 9.2. Come on back for 9.3. See you soon.